On Sky Sports Radio, time to review the weekend's racing with our stable of experts. He's pretty exciting this game, streeting his rivals. Who impressed? Who didn't? Horses to follow. And have a look at the time. And your calls. Welcome to Punter's Postmortem. Really starting to go through his gears, just continues to raise the bar. <laughs> Yeah, good morning and welcome to Punters Postmortem on this Monday. It is the 14th of November. Looking forward to today's show. We've got to Chris Roots, Glenn Mundy and Dean Lister as our panel. We'll take your calls on 13 53 53. And We'll dissect the weekend that was. We'll talk about uh, all the racing and we'll talk about what's happening ahead and yeah, have a bit of a yarn. There's plenty doing in our racing game and good to have the three gentlemen on our panel joining us. We've got Scone today and we've got some scratchings. Nick Cognac, good morning to you, mate. Yeah, good morning, Dave. And the rail position's out three metres from the 800 to the winning post and it's true the remainder. It's a heavy 10 today. Showers are expected and we have 52 scratching, so numbers only. In race one, take out eight. Eight out of one in race two, one, two, four, seven, nine, and thirteen. One, two, four, seven, nine, and thirteen from two in race three, three, four, six, ten, and twelve. Three, four, six, ten, and twelve from race three in race four, six, eight, nine, ten, and fourteen. 6, 8, 9, 10, 14 from race 4. In race 5, 5, 9, 11, 12 and 13. 5, 9, 11, 12 and 13 from race 5. In race 6, 1, 5, 9 and 13. 1, 5, 9 and 13 from race 6. In race 7, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10 and 11 and emergency 15. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11 and 15 from race 7. In race 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 14 and emergency 17 and 18. 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 14, 17 and 18 from race 8. And in race 9, 2, 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and emergency 16, plus a late scratching of number 9. So 2, 6, 9, the late scratching, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 from race 9 today at Scone. Dave. Fantastic, Nick. Thank you very much for that. All right, so we'll have preview Scone. A little bit later on after this morning's punters post-mortem, I'll go to our first guest on the panel. We've got Chris Roots joining us. Good morning, Chris. No, 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 no. no, no he's not there. He was there. He's just been uh, disconnected. We'll go to Dean Lester, who I think is there. G'day, Dino. Hello there, Dave. How are you, mate? How was your weekend? Yeah, it was good. Uh, we had a uh, good meeting Friday night at the Valley, and then uh, Cram and Cup Day Saturday was a really good day. Uh, four track records went. Uh, obviously, better class of horse running at Cranbourne than they usually do, but uh, it was a, it was a good uh, day. It was a good day for the Sutton Young team winning uh, three of the races. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, Glenn Munsey, I think, is there as well. G'day, Glenn. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dean. Good morning to uh, Chris when he comes on and all the listeners. Yes, beautiful day, Dave, but uh, I'll tell you what, geez, we had some rain here last night. Yeah, um, poor. Yeah. It uh, did, 30, well, the golf course is out of play today, so uh, we might go through about 11 or 12, Dave, I've got nothing to do. Well, mate, I, I, I wanted to put this out, I know the boys on the Big Sports Breakfast had um, heroes and villains, so I just want to throw a bit of a hero out here to all of these tracks that are being affected, uh, what we saw with Gundagai on uh, those last couple of days, Friday, Saturday, the fact they had that race meeting was extraordinary in that crowd. I've got a photo through this morning from Mick Dumasey about... Um, the parks, parks. Unfortunately, that track is underwater. A section of it uh, this morning, and no doubt there's other tracks and whatnot uh, around the place. So um, yeah, just uh, the fact that these sort of clubs they survive pretty much on, and it's the same right across the country. And we've seen that flooding in country Victoria and country Queensland, etc. But uh, yeah, the, the fact that the volunteers now game and the people that you know use that effort and time to get behind their local racetrack, I think is uh, is huge. Chris Roots is now there. G'day, Chris. G'day, Dave, Munns and Dino. Um, great day of racing at um, Newcastle on the weekend. It was um, 
track race was. really well up there. Track race really well up there. You know, won from everywhere, so there was no excuses, no excuses for anything that was beaten. And it was one of those one of those days where I think we're finding now that when you're back in this carnival, you've got to be thinking a long way ahead to win these races. And James Cummings certainly did that with. Um, with the winner, Vilana, Vilana there, he, he, he's kept it really fresh and he's, he's now off to Perth. So Vilana's going to go to Perth, Chris? Yeah, he's, he'll, um, he's going to have a look at him this morning and if he's, um, he's happy with him, he'll hop on the plane and go to a winner bottom. So that'll um, help um, the hunter, Hunter's reputation. He, he was he did beat two Group 1 winners there on the weekend and and um, was was really impressive. So while, while, while he's informed, get him over to Perth, and there's um, a couple of races there for him in the winter bottom and the gold rush. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's going with Cascadian, Special K, yeah. uh, Paul Lely. Yeah. And, Dean, I read last night that uh, our mayor's travelling to Perth, Steinem. Yes. Uh, yeah, I found that out yesterday morning that uh, she's uh, heading over. So I imagine she's got two shots there with the uh, railway and the... Uh, the northerly now, as it's called, the Kingston. I Town think Classic I think it's only I, I think it might only be one day. Now I was talking to the yeah. guys from Perth, and they might it might just go to the northerly, might miss the railway, just to yeah. Well, to, it sort of came on the radar very late, and she does like her race of space, so that makes sense that she's only going to the wait for age. Mm. Just take the twenty six dollars. Um, I just see because uh, Gareth Hall, I see tweeted that. Uh, down in Melbourne on SEN. So he tweeted what Rothfire's going as well. Kementari, winning partner, Yonkers, minxed moment. Um, do you think we'll see Roth, many of... Rothfire could finish in Dubai. Yes, could. Yes, that's the plan. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. Uh, do you think we'll see many of the Sydney jocks go over? I think there's been a couple of offers sent towards, say, a Tommy Berry, etc. So do you think that they'll be lured across there or is the, the money too good here, Muns, for the moment? Uh, well, it's the period of time here, Dave. We've got Ingham Day here at um, Ramwick. That's the tenth. Yep. So you've got you've got Kembla this week. Well, the um, the official start of the carnival in Perth was was last weekend. Uh, but you know you've got um, the Ingham, as I said, on the tenth. The, the the really the the only day they've got there, you'd have to say, would be you know onwards of the seventeenth because they're not going to give up. Um, if they've got a good ride in the Ingham, it's a couple of million dollar race there. But uh, Willie's back, so you know there goes there goes a few. Um, mm. But the Sydney horses more than likely, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Godolphin sent someone over to ride all their horses because they're going to be in different races. Mm. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think I think you'll find they've got a couple of Melbourne jockeys booked already, and I'd I'd be very surprised if Nashville Willa doesn't want to follow Balana over. So it was it it's a sort of a, it's a situation where. Um, you look at what's going to happen, and of course, James McDonald's not riding at um, Canberra on the weekend. He's he's going to Hong Kong, so he might even be seeing him day because the horses he's riding on uh, over in Hong Kong on the weekend, super um, super wealthy, wealthy and romantic king, are both um, going to be going to the international day. So he might he might he might missing him day as well. So you know they've just got to pick and choose where their best their best rides are, and I think they're getting pretty good at this. We've Seen jockeys go from Mel come to Mel from Melbourne to win a Golden Eagle this year, and our Sydney jockeys go down there and dominate in Melbourne. Well, we've seen. Well, the other thing too is, uh, and I mentioned this to the Big Sports Breakfast team before. What it will allow is it allow other opportunities for other jockeys here in Sydney, and also if those Melbourne boys and girls go uh, west or, or travel anywhere, it, g- it gives opportunities for that young talent coming through, um, which there, there is plenty in, in both states. And, um, in fact, right across the board, you see these young jocks coming through. Do you know of what any well, what Melbourne jockeys might head west, apart from Ollie? Do you know? Oh, well, I sort of thinking Godolphin. I mean, Blake Shin's been doing a lot of work for them. I just wondered if he'd be heading over at least for the wait for age races. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ollie's certainly wanting to have a bit of time over there. Um uh, that, that's all I can think of at the moment. But, okay. um, I think yeah, Jamie Carr think might be one in the mix, do you know? Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry, I did read that and uh, I did uh, get a laugh. Uh, Simon Miller was telling me that uh, last Monday when it was reported that William Pike was coming home uh, on Tuesday, there was never more tra- track work jockeys and riders wanting to ride work than they have been for the last <laughs> 12 months. So uh, they've, they've, they've got off their bums and they're going again. They certainly are. Um, boys, before we get into the racing on the weekend at uh, Newcastle, and obviously we talk about Cranbourne, I just wanted to get your opinion 
the three of you. And and for the punters out there, on what's happened here with Peter Moody, we obviously um, heard that uh, that audio filter around, as we do. We heard about what he had to say about uh, Blakey McDougal's ride of the horse. And then, um, obviously, from that, we... Um, we then see an apology from Peter on social media and uh, we, you know, have various people chiming in, giving their two cents here and there. What's firstly your opinion? I mean, my, my opinion to the Big Sports Breakfast team was I didn't really have an issue with what um, with what Peter said. That's what Peter wanted to say and that's the game that we're in. Um, and I obviously we haven't had comment from, from Blakey, but um, gee, from knowing Blakey and from meeting him, I don't think he would have been knocked to the ground with a feather, I think he just would have said, right, well, that's your opinion and I'm going to prove you wrong. Are we cuddling our participants too much? Maybe as a follow-up question. I might start with you, Chris. I think with situations like this, um, owners pay to be have, have a service from trainers, so they want to hear what the trainer has to say and things like that. Where it becomes sticky is the owners get, these, um, get a video and they send it on to one or two mates and then that those mates send it on to 10 or other people and it becomes public knowledge now this is probably something that peter wanted to get say to his owners and let them let them know i think he said there the um blake will continue riding the client probably won't be in the stable anymore so that sort of shows you where uh, moods head is it's it's one of those things i think if you own a horse and the and anyone who owns a horse these days knows how good trainers are at um, communicating with how horses are going and things like that. And it, it can get quite emotional. If you've set a horse for a race and you get a bad ride and you, know, you see six weeks of work go up and smoke in, in the space of 30 seconds, you you you, um, you can say things that you probably think about about an hour later and want to delete. But these days, when you send it out in a message, you can't get it back. Uh, Dino? I, I, I think... Uh that once you press the button on these updates, don't think that they're private. They're public property, and they go through uh, other companies like uh, the you know the Stabilize and Ardex and Prism and those 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 businesses. That's you know so it it might be to an owner, but it becomes public property. I mean, if you did that in other workplaces, it's it's building on workplace bullying or. There's, there's some form of it not being right. I, I don't have a problem with Pete spraying a ride. Uh, do it in the mounting yard. Do it one one on one, uh, which didn't happen on Saturday, I don't believe. Uh, and just, you know, I think there was there's better ways to express to his owners how disappointed he was. Munns? Yeah, I, I, and I, I think everything, um, as Dean said, as soon as you press send... Uh, on that, it goes from being a private conversation to a public conversation because you can't control what happens to it after you press send. The only private conversation you can have is in the mounting yard when only the owners are present. Now, if someone is hanging over the fence and picks that up and then reports it, um, it's then basically a a third party uh, trying to hear what was going on. They don't have the actual conversation recorded, what has happened here. Now, Pete has, you know, in the cold and hard light of days, he's, he's realised that he, prob- he he shouldn't have done it. He's apologised for it. And that's all you can do. Uh, hopefully, the first thing he did was ring Blake McDougall and apologise to him first, rather than issue a public apology like that, because Blake uh, should have been the first to hear it. He should have been the first to hear the spray. And he should have been first, first to hear the apology. Now, he's not the first person that's ever done it. He's not the last person that's ever done it. In the heat of the moment, Pete's probably got home and said, Jesus, you know, I'll put all this time into this horse. He's a particular horse that needs to be ridden a particular way. Uh, he stewed on it all day, and then he's gone right, and in he goes. And he's that sort of bloke. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And he, he's gone bang, and he's typed away, and he, he said it to the owners. He's apologised, and the first thing he said in the conversation, he said, I apologise for the way that, you know, this horse was ridden today and da-da-da-da-da. So, you know, it was a heartfelt apology to the owners to start with. It was meant for the owners to hear coming from the trainer. And then, you know, away he went. He took the top off. And once you take the top off, it's very, very hard to get it back on again. Mm. Is there something we need to do from a technology point of view where these can't be shared and they get sent to the owner and that's it? Or is it just too hard to do that? Well, owners want everything. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying don't send it to an owner, but uh, 
maybe it's a it's a viewed once or it's you need a special encryption to do it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but um, but what what will happen now is um, we you know I must admit if I'm paying three and a half thousand a month or if I'm paying a share of whatever the, the fees are, I I almost want the hard on the sleeve stuff. So I, you're I, you're getting a cheap to, trainer, Dave. If you, if you, <laughs> You are getting a cheap trainer for a start, but you, you want expletives. That's what you want. No, I don't want expletives. Oh, I, 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 I want I, passion, I, though, Dino. I want passion, and that's oh, what well, that's what he showed. Passionate. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, we're all passionate about the industry mm. within the confines of of modern society. Forget, and it's not woke or anything. I read all that. That's garbage. Yeah. It's just. I mean, it's just. We, we, you know, you at, at Tabcor and anywhere you work, you've got to sit down and do these workplace regulations and what you can and can't say to people and mm. uh yeah you know, i just imagine if blake had come in on saturday and said you know what this was a maiden in a benchmark 70 it's a big horse it needs a big track it needs 2200 it was in the wrong race imagine how many more rides he'd get for the stable if he'd done that in his post-race update mm. so you know like it's a little bit of give and take you know they're working as a team uh, and that horse will go out on a big track next start and go very close to winning. He was he, he got to every corner on Saturday. Forget about the ride. Every corner, he scrambled around every bend. On the line, he was going beautifully. So he, he can win his next start. But, uh, yeah, I just think... Um, oh, I just think that you can have passion without being... Uh, there was some pretty, you know, pretty crude things said, I, I thought. I just think, that, I just think in the end, it comes down to being using common sense and just um, tapering it back a little bit. Like, you wouldn't... Dave wouldn't, you, Dave wouldn't go out and spray someone someone, someone for having an opinion, and Peter obviously had an opinion, and it was a strong one, but I'm, I'm sure in the cold height of day, he'd probably never do that again. So, mm. you know, and it's not about passion, Dave. It's about the... Our industry needs to be so professional these days because there's so many people who want to tear it down. Mm. And... We, and and if you, if you give them a, a little a little bit of a lead, they'll take 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 the whole reign. You know that's the that's what happens. And we we've just got to be um, very professional and keep it keep it keep it in the, keep it in the realms of of um, being professional. And yeah. that's what that was on Saturday. And fair and 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 fair points from Dino and fair points from Ruder. And I I just mentioned the passion because I that's what I love about Peter and I love about blokes like Mick Price, etc. Um, and we get that passion and maybe. Maybe if he drops the expletive and just if you read the transcript and says uh, what he said without using the expletive, maybe there isn't, you know, as as the the, the theatre about it as, as what's been generated. It's just him sort of, you know, suggesting that he wasn't happy with the ride and they move on. So anyway, it's an interesting world. It's, it's the way of the world now with technology and, um, you know, it's, yeah... Yeah, three and a half thousand. Can we find a trail for that? Um, let's talk about Valana in the Hunter, guys. Uh, the performance, the ride from Nash, uh, and also too, just a comment, Chris, on uh, the success of the day because hearing it all come through the audio, it was pa- absolutely humming there at Newcastle on Saturday. Yeah, it was. It was a, a they've got a they've got a good thing going down there now, and it's going to be it's going to be sort of an unstoppable force. And I think, like I said before, horses that are aimed at these. Races at the end of the carnival are going to be the ones you want, you want to be with. So it was only Valona's third start. This preparation kept very fresh by James Cummings. He he went to the Silver Eagle. He showed showed he had dash in his legs there. Had no hope in the Golden Eagle once he drew twenty. And and Nash went through the reasons reasons why he, he said just never got in and really through the line of the track was a little bit hard for him. And he got back there there on Saturday back to thirteen hundred. And I have to say, there was two near-perfect rides in this. Tim Clark's on in the Congo was an absolute belter. He's the best judge of speed and front runners in the country. And he got it exactly right. He just ran into a very, very good horse in Milana, which Nash rode, put into the race, had it 1-1. And the first four around the, around the turn ended up fighting out the uh, front, running the first four, four placements. But don't get it wrong about that. That was because they were the best four horses in the race. She had two Group One winners. Ravina's absolutely low flying. It'll win a it'll win a race soon, and and Valana, who's now going to a Group One race. So you could have three Group One winners in that finish from the weekend by by two weeks' time. I I just think he he's going enormous, and I think at twelve hundred metres, if he can if he can posse up like that, he's got enough enough toe at the end, enough turn of foot at the end to be very competitive in a winner bottle. 
Munns, um, what exactly happened uh, with the market here on this particular race? And, and obviously, the, he was always sort of kept pretty safe, wasn't he, Valana, with the books? Well, he was, he was second pick all week, Dave, behind in the Congo. And then Tim Owens, uh, in his sort of preview uh, from uh, the bookmaking side of things, at the end of our preview on Sky Thoroughbred Central, said, well, I, I think these, uh, both these favourites have got to trade closer to $5. And that's when Valana was, in, was a $5 chance in the morning and by midway through the afternoon was into a $4 favourite and took favouritism off in the Congo. Now... Valana at the death got back to five dollars. Uh, in the Congo got to six dollars fifty, uh, but they still ran. They still ran the two picks uh, in the race at, at that price. So uh, it was right in the fact that they'd get back out. And that when you've got your two favourites that at different stages have been four dollars each or two uh, at different times that run five dollars and six dollars fifty. A number of the others have to sort of firm up, but there wasn't a sort of you know, really, really good go in the race outside it. You know, there was a number of horses like Swats. That was 23 to about 16. Uh, Brutality, 21 to 15. Ingratiating was 21 into a short of 16. Got back to 18. Skyman was always around $12, $13. Overpass was as much as 19 got into 14 uh, Gemsong was 17 got into as short as 11 got back to 13 uh, Patchy Cat got from $7.50 out to $9. So the order remained fairly static right throughout the day. It was just the two favourites got out a little bit. Uh, Dino, just from watching uh, from afar the, the Newcastle race, what was your assessment of it um, from Valana? And obviously to hear that news that they're going to go west probably, uh, that's that's exciting. It's, he's, he's an up-and-coming horse, isn't he? He is, and uh, I just thought uh, it was a race of great skill by the jockeys. Uh, Chris spoke of uh, Tim Clark's near-perfect ride in front, and it looked like there was going to be more pressure, but he, he just got it at right in front and... Nash, I think, had to get to in the Congo just at the right moment because if he'd given him half a chance to fight back, he might have. So he got in quick and late, and I thought it was uh, terrific riding by both of them. Uh, I thought it was the, the key to the race, and uh, uh, it was more of an on-paces race than I probably anticipated, but uh, it, was, it was a really good contest. And uh, uh, back in the field, uh, Munns, our horse, uh, Brutality, next week. Yeah, tick, 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 tick. That's all he's doing, Dino. Just ticking along. Yeah, Rick and Bale yeah. very, very happy with him. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about watching this race, we, we all watch the race together in um, in our little room there at Newcastle, and Corey's there, and they got to about, the, oh, they just after they turned for home, I said to Corey, I said, geez, this is travelling, Valana. And I said, when's he going to let it go? When's he going to let it go? And... I don't think you give in the Congo enough rap because Falano was going to put three on it when Nash let it go. But as soon as it got to in the Congo, in the Congo yeah. said, no, you, you're going to fight as hard as what you think you to get past me to just mm. go just to show you how good in the Congo actually went. Yeah. Well, you've got to remember in the Congo won a golden rose and held off a horse called Animo. It's mm. not a, it hasn't got, it hasn't won since, I know, but it's, it's going really well. It's one of those horses. I think they got home in a touch over 34, which realistically, the way they ran the race, they ran quick enough that the horses couldn't make a move from back in the field and, and quick enough so they could could sprint home in a really, really, really smart fast section. So it made it near impossible for anything that was probably more than three or four legs off them, even if it was going really well, to um, to get home and and um, and challenge those ones in front. And like I said before, you've got to remember, these are, group, these are proper group one horses. We're not looking... They're not looking at horses that are going to fold up, but, and that's what we saw if within the Congo. It never folded up. And they, they put a length of three quarters on Gravina, which was travelling as well. So that, that just shows you where the, where the race is at. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to become a better and better race, that race. Yeah, they went, uh, they went 1.1 seconds out, went out 1.1 seconds faster than Coal Crusher did. Uh, and we'll talk about that race in a minute. It's just basically become you know, one of the better races on the program. Uh, 1.1 seconds faster the first 700, and they basically came home identical the last 600. Uh, Cole Crusher came home five one hundredths of a second quicker. But, um, you know, the you, you talk about the day there. I, I don't think it needs a lot of tinkering because the Hunter is a standalone road. But this benchmark 88 that they had there, it is base, it, it's, it's like the Sydney Stakes to the Everest. I don't think you're putting think- enough weight and how good a race it has become. 
I think you'll find these races that uh, the, the next year will be a, a sort of consolation for the Golden Eagle on Golden Eagle Day because it's become so popular. And I think you'll find with the Hunter and the, the Gong, these 88s might become hundreds to to give or 95s to give those horses that are that just miss out on this race a chance to to run without 63 and 61 on their backs, which the two did, and that they'll they'll just structure. They're still learning. You've got to remember these races are only three or four years old. They're still learning what the program needs to be to to give every horse a chance. Like, if you can't get into this race as a 95, then you're running in that 88 and probably just needs to go to, a, to probably being a 95. And the other thing is, I think you'll find the spring stakes will move next year. I think I think they're looking to move it back back to a position where it leads into a leads into a race during the carnival because it's sort of lost where it is at the moment. Let's get to a caller on the line. Dean's on the line. Good morning, Dean. Great, boys. How you going? Good, mate. What's uh, your question? Mate, I've got a couple for you. I just wonder if Dino could explain oh, a little bit more what uh, that Peter Moody, Blake McDougall exchange was, not being on social media, but uh, the main point was, um, what did Dino, the, I know the track was on fire at Cranbourne, but Braden Star, geez, that looks impressive. And um, what do you think of Uncle Bryn as well? Um, I sort of try and compare Uncle Bryn to I wish I win. I think I wish I win's a very good horse. I just wanted to know what Dino thought of them too. Uh, uh, Braden Star was fantastic winning the, the shooting star. The track was on fire, but I think it was because they it was just had that little bit of give in it and the horses really let go on it. And uh, Braden Star was good. Uh, he'll race through his grades very quickly. And Uncle Bryn did a good job to come back from the five diamonds, Melbourne to Sydney to Melbourne in seven days, 1,800 back to 1,600, but uh, suited by a very fast speed, a very good ride by Zara. Uh, I wouldn't be comparing him to I wish I win. I think he's probably three or four lengths behind him, but he's certainly good enough to win a you know, pretty handy race over the autumn. It was just a yes, F, Uncle Bryn. <laughs> well, that's right, exactly. exactly. Then he got gall- he got galloped on in the in the race here in Sydney, and he did. The other and that, yeah. that was all the thing all to, to get right in seven days. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the concern in that race, Dean, you know, with some of those horses like our Playboy and that, you did say on Saturday morning that he had run races on, on uh, good races on good tracks before, but he's probably better known as a wet tracker. And some of those horses on Saturday, that track probably just become a bit too firm for them. Yeah, oh, and the races were quick, two months. That, that was the thing. That they got off the bit. Like, some of those horses just never travelled uh, that you expected to travel into the race. And... At the 600, there was only one travelling, and it was Uncle Bryn. He was just absolutely in the sweet spot. We've got uh, more calls coming in. Give us a ring. 13.53.53 is the open line number if you've got a question. Well, uh, we just touched in on the Cranbourne Cup with Uncle Bryn, Dino. There's another one um, that uh, has come up here on the text line. Can you ask Dino about uh, the win of Kissinger, which was in the 25.40 race? Um, Lindsay Smith, Damien Oliver, what do you think of um, a kiss? Is it Kissinger or Kissinger? No, Kissinger. Kissinger, um, yeah. It, yeah, it was, it was a great battle of tactics, that race. It was Jamie Mott and Damien Oliver, and uh, I think Jamie Mott thought he had Damien right where he wanted him at about the 700, and he got going, and just as he did, Alana Kelly came out and actually flushed him out four wide, and he, he just couldn't keep shutting the gate, and Damien kept creeping through and ultimately got the money on Kissinger, who's going well. He's been up a long time. Uh, he's uh, heading towards the baggot on New Year's Day, so uh, he... Did a good job to win. A uh, bigger track will suit him too, going towards Flemington. But uh, it, was a, it was a good win. Uh, and, he, yeah, he's going well. And what about... A lot of, a lot of talk Gremlins. about that horse. Sorry, Dave. A lot of talk about that horse, Dunkel. Uh, Dean, in the, in the in three-roll, the 2,000-metre yeah. race. Yeah, well, uh, I'd like to have heard Patrick Payne's voicemail after that race. Uh, he, uh, he just missed the boat there and uh, ran home. He ran home the best 400 and 200 of the meeting. Uh, and then and hung in under pressure. I think if he goes straight, he wins, uh, but he didn't. And, uh, yeah, he, he's a very, very nice staying prospect. He's a done deal. Uh, he won at Mini Valley. He should have won on Saturday. And I wouldn't be surprised if they nearly tuck him away and, and South Australian Derby uh, would beckon for him in the autumn. And what about, uh, speaking of um, messy races, what about the, the race that Greece was involved in, Dino? Yeah, well, she just... Didn't, Ethan Brown didn't quite get a... You know, he probably should have led on her. And once they, once they crossed her and she was third defence, 
uh, and you're at a dollar seventy. They all know where you are, and he uh, he tried to get out, and in doing that, he got a fifteen meeting suspension. And while that was going on, the stable mate, who is a very good horse, I think, in the making, Gaza Blanca, we got to see the the proper horse on Saturday. Uh, he just strode around them and won with ease, and uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's an Australian Guineas horse in the autumn. Okay, perfect. All right, that's uh, Graza Blanca, Greece S Max. Uh, we've got Sean on the line. G'day, Sean. Morning, guys. How are we today? Good, mate. Let's look, first of all, I'll give credit to Jamie Carr on Saturday. Her, her insight on seven was amazing. So she's she's fantastic. That, that that girl, she's amazing. So yeah, she was really good. But my question I have for Dino is uh, Jigsaw. Do you think we might have seen a real Jigsaw now, Dino, or maybe still not quite there yet? Oh, I think I think just fresh is best. I mean, you just look at his record. He won on debut, he beat Artorias. He came back as a three-year-old and he won, uh, or late two-year-old and won at Mooney Valley. Uh, last preparation, he won f- first two runs in. And again on Saturday, I think you catch him early in a preparation. I think he tapers off, but uh, I think if he sp- has his runs spaced and, and regroups and kept fresh, uh, that's what you saw of him on Saturday. That, that would win him a stakes race because that was verging on a stakes race on Saturday. Does that make it hard to place him? Maybe he's only like his fresh runs or his best runs. Does that make it hard for him? Oh, I think if he races once a month, I think if he doesn't get into it, you know, and, and stays short like thousand eleven hundred, uh, there's an eleven hundred at Flemington, the Kensington, in about four weeks, uh, or there's the there's the Doveton Stakes in two weeks. So it'll be interesting to see which path they take with him, because uh, I think that the time between runs is a big key to him. Beautiful, Sean. Thanks for your call, mate. Thank you very much. Back in um, New South Wales, uh, a comment here on uh, from uh, you. I'll go to you here, Munns, first. The Spring Stakes. Um, obviously, we're, a lot of us were, were looking at the favourite, uh, Robusto, and um, out in front there was a, a good sort of tempo set uh, with Say You Battle, etc. And um, uh, too good, the Snowden horse, the eight. Yeah, well, uh, it, you know, we, when you looked at the, the form, Dave, um, you know, she had only won a, a maiden at Gosford at a previous run. Before that was placed in a maiden at Kembla. Um, her only, that was her only win, being a maiden, of course. And you'd have to say that she was up in grade in that race there. There was a sneaky little um, move for it. When I say sneaky little move, it was 26 into about $18, $19. So someone liked it. Uh, but a, a lot of that had to probably more to do with the fact that the, the favourite, save a date for me, that was favourite, on it sat their favourite two dollars eighty two dollars ninety from Wednesday and the strange situation here now you know most people had it there and thereabouts in their numbers somewhere without saying it was a good thing or had it on top or whatever like that so it sat two dollars eighty since Wednesday two dollars ninety no great movement still two dollars ninety Saturday morning um, Timmy Owens got on the radio I, I put two and two together early on the Saturday morning and was looking at what was going, what was going on and said well this has got lay of the day written all over at this and Timmy came on and he called me Mr Munsey which was very very good to him good to see him get a bit of um, you know, respect uh, from the boys in the office anyway uh, but it got to five dollars and it, it and it was very, very uh, easy in the market. So uh, quite a number of them have to firm up when you get that situation. You've gone from being a two-to-one chance to a four-to-one chance. Uh, but it, it just never really got into the race at all. There, there was only sort of three lengths or four lengths befo- between the first seven, uh, uh, first 11 across the line in the race. Now, uh, it, Chris did say that you know that they are considering moving it back to probably its traditional home on Newcastle Cup Day and then making it a lead into the Spring Champion Stakes, uh, which it had been over the time. But, um, you know, they're, they're, I think there's a couple of handy horses. I think Kazalark is a horse that's getting better and better with each run. I don't think he's really nailed what he wants to do or how to handle himself in a race at the moment. Robusto, um, well, he got, you know, he got well back in the race there. He doesn't have a real sort of zip about him, he, he was sort of going up and down in the one spot, but still making ground to the line. And Candos Cosmos, well, he's put in... He's, he's only had five starts now. He's put in three rippers uh, and two shockers. Uh, the two shockers are on really, really heavy tracks at his second and third start in the race. But his two runs this time in have been very, very good. 
Now, um, we'll go, I'll go back to you here, Chris, because there's a text here. Um, they're in to your mate about uh, Pink Ivory. What did you make of the uh, the running of that 1850 benchmark? 88? It um, was a funny day for Greg Hickman because uh, 11-11, unfortunately, didn't get the job done in the Hunter, but uh, they got the chocolates here, the stable, with a similar group of owners. Have we got Chris? Maybe oh, he's dropped he, out. He, he's he dropped knew he was going to get a serve. Yeah, he knew. He's, he's, he's yeah, done what Tommy good. did uh, late in the day, jumped off. <laughs> I'm here, Dave. We got gotcha. you. Yep. Um, Pink Ivory was back with Roald Dino. He tried to. It, it just never, never let down. It was a, it was a weird one. It looked like it was travelling as well as the winner at the time. I think this was just a cracking ride by Tyler Schiller. And um, if you watch the, if you watch the race back, um, he got on the back of the Osbred course that was the favourite. At, halfway down the straight and it took him everywhere he needed to go and then just peeled off its back and beat it. It was it was a belting ride from Tyler. Now he's leading the apprenticeship apprentice premiership after Saturday in Sydney. We've got Dylan Gibbons who's I think um, on eighteen and then we've got Zach Lloyd on fourteen. I can't believe these three apprentices because they've all got different strengths and Zach Lloyd's gonna have three kilos for a lot longer than the other two boys will they have, have, have already had an edge, so I think um, we're going to be watching the three three boys talking about how good they are. Well, we we might just, just hold, hold up there, like Chris. Do, I think there's an internet. Sounds like there's an internet drama with uh, Chris Reese. We'll just try and re-establish that. It sounds connection. like the conversation Darren Flindell and Flindell and I were having Friday night. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, we'll just try and re-establish and that line beautifully. Um, there was no internet issues, Dean. I can tell you that now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no we'll, we'll try. And re- it's just the that's just the codec playing up on the uh, the internet from uh, Chris's end. We'll try and re-establish that line straight away. If we can't, we'll get him on the uh, the phone. Uh, Tim, text finding in here and, and give us a call thirteen fifty three fifty three. Uh, Dino, on yep. the West, obviously, we uh, we talk about this carnival happening over, um, and, you know, you've got your eye on the prize over there when it comes to it. In relation to uh, this uh, this winner, my Bella May, who got the job done in the Placid Arc Stakes, what did you make of the performance? And also, just a comment to as well, a few punters here wanting to know your thoughts on Devoted uh, in the Peter Stakes in the last. Um, with regard to the, uh, the Placid Arc, it... Uh yeah, it uh, was a good race and took a massive um, prize money injection this year into uh, $500,000. So um, for the three-year-old sprinters, it was a, a real chance. But my Bellamy, the Phillies, Phillies have been better than the Colts over there in the sprinting ranks. And uh, they ran one, two, three again here with uh, Pat Carberry winning on my Bellamy and beating the stablemate Revit up for William Pike. Uh, while Bell, uh, good closing effort in third. Uh, but the winner was really good. Uh, she was you know, clearly the best run of the race and uh, and dominant late. So, no, she's going well. Um, where she goes now, does she have a go at the winter bottom with the lightweight? I think she probably will. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and with regard to Devoted in the, in the last, last. yeah. Just had a lot to do. He ran home fifth best last 200 of the meeting. Ninth best last 400, so it was a good run. He just didn't win, and hence he probably won't get into the railway. But uh, yeah, it, it just didn't work out for him. The, the second horse there's going very well, also. Uh, let's Gallivant, uh, he'd won the Hannons out at Kalgoorlie, and uh, he's maintained that form, so he ran well. And, and Surgeon Rock's the winner, more than capable, and good to see Jimmy Taylor with another smart horse. But uh, yeah, Devoted's going well, just don't think he's going to get into the railway now. All right, fantastic. We've got uh, a question coming through on the text line and also on the phone here. Glenn is on line one. Give us a call, 133353. G'day, Glenn. Uh, g'day. Uh, g'day, how are you going? Good, mate. Um, I asked Glenn Munty a question about change of gears and it was noticed uh, on Sky Channel on Saturday when I was watching the races. Uh, and that's the Willa was wearing uh, or adjusting some spurs to his shoe. Now, is is that a gear change? No, uh, n- no uh, it was uh, more of a, an equipment uh, adjustment. I would say that the stewards would uh, had looked at Nash's spurs and... For the layman, spurs are a piece of equipment that goes around the heel of the boots. Uh, They are a metal or a very, very hard uh, 
plastic. I don't think they are. I think they are. They're, they're uh, the middle, all, all of, yeah. And they're rounded sorry, off too. They're, they're yeah. rounded off yeah. and they're, they're what's called a dummy spur. So mm. they've got a rounded end. They're just, yeah, um, yeah, on the heel of the, of the boot, as you said, month. And I'd say the steward would have picked up that that spur was, was, um, was bent and they can't be bent upwards. Right. Uh, because uh, that that that's against the rules. They have to basically be at ninety degrees to the to what they're attached to. And what had happened was the farrier he evidently sent a message to the the barriers or the steward positioned at the barriers have said that uh, they they must have not been compliant. And the farrier then took it took uh, the spur off Nash and placed it on the running rail and got the uh, the hammer out and straightened it out before Nash could put it back on. Well, uh, the only one that showed any great concern was Crea Deeris because they jumped from the barriers, and I'm sure Nash gave him a, a dig in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the the midsection with the with the hooks and said, "Right, oh, let's okay, boy, uh, let's go." And Crea Deeris sort of got the fright of his life. And next minute, he was up outside the lead. Uh, but that was what happened on, on Saturday. Now, they, they are not a gear change. It is an option for the jockeys whether they want to wear them or not. You don't have to identify that you're wearing them as an official gear change. Uh, it's solely uh, the, the, uh, the choice of the jockey whether or not they wear them. Not a massive amount of jockeys do wear them. I noticed the horse did improve, improve after having two duck eggs behind its name. Uh, that's what got me interested. Yeah, I, I, about, about I think that. it was probably more to do with the fact it was it ridden in a much more aggressive manner to put itself into the race in a race where there didn't seem to, to be a huge amount of speed. And funnily enough, when he, um, after about, you know, 500 metres, when Nash got him to come back to him, he came back a little bit too quickly and Global Osbred run straight up his backside. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, Dan Glenn. Thanks very much. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you very much for your call. We're going to take a break. 9.44. Give us a ring. 13.53.53. Tyler Schiller on starting out. Went and did a traineeship with Chris Haywood in Wagga when I was in year 10 and I was very grateful for Chris for getting me into the game because I didn't think anyone back in that time would give me a crack to be honest. I was pretty rough at riding, I wasn't very good at all but I came a long way once I got to Phil Sweeney's about three years later when I turned 17 or 18. 11am Monday on Racing HQ. It doesn't have to cost the earth to earn a share in a racehorse. Patriot Bloodstock offers an affordable, entry-level price point for racehorse ownership with fixed-price training fees. We love first-time owners and putters clubs. We'll get your friends together and start a syndicate. A Brave Smash filly, fully broken, is available now from a dam that's produced five foals to race, all winners. She ticks all the boxes. Check out what's available at patriotbloodstock.com.au. Patriot Bloodstock, an authorised representative of Stable Connect. AF Licence 33696. Foreign-owned bookies like Sportsbet and Ladbrokes are taxed less than other Australian gambling products. Support our call for fair play. Visit fairplaycoalition.com.au for more details. Authorised by Aussie Fair Play Coalition Proprietary Limited, Melbourne. The Australian Women's Health Diary packed with expert health advice important to every woman. Plus, every diary sold supports breast cancer research. Just $19.99 from newsagents, Woolworths and participating post offices and online at womenshealthdiary.com.au. Australia's favourite windows and doors. Uh, excuse me, i just got to get the door. Jess, can you take over, please? Yep, sure. Australia's favourite windows and doors are available at... Ah, uh, sorry. Now someone's knocking at the back door. Um, how about we let the main voiceover guy take over? Wideline Windows and Doors. Bring over 50 years of producing quality Australian-made windows and doors that bring life into your home. Enhance the feeling of home with Wideline Windows and Doors. Inquire now at wideline.com.au. This is Punter's Postmortem on Sky Sports Radio. You most certainly are. We're going to get some horses to follow soon from our panel of uh, Chris Roots, Glenn Munsey and Dean Lester. Dino, uh, there's a question here on Jigsaw in the Apache Cat uh, Classic um, and also Ashford Street. Uh, a bit of a question there as well. Uh, should we be following Ash- Ashford Street? Uh, yeah, we spoke of Jigsaw just yeah. before. He's, he, uh, he was brilliant first up and whether that's the absolute key to him, we'll find out. But... Uh, he ran them into the ground, and it was a terrific win. Uh, with regard to Ashford Street, 
Gee, he's been a bit stiff uh, through the spring. It's been the wettest spring for a lot of years, but when he's lined up, he's often lined up on dry ground. He just needs a wet track. Uh, he's going well, uh, but he needs wet ground. And um, up to Newcastle boys, um, Chris, Coal Crusher, very good there. Plenty of punters saying got on the Coal Crusher at $18. Uh, I think it was one of the legs that we threw out in the uh, the punters panel. And also Democracy Manifest ticking over nicely. Yeah, he, he's going he's, he's going nice. They wouldn't be dropping off my ha ha force. They waited forward with the big weight, I think. Just ridden a little bit more quietly, he can be a bit more explosive as well. Um, unfortunately, my phone line was a bit like Pink Ivory, and I let everyone down there in the um, in the um, punters, punters uh, multi there on Friday. Yeah, and um, that that conversation we're going to have with Chris later on uh, won't be going anywhere outside the the members of the punters panel. It won't be made available to the public <laughs> at all. I'll, I'll tape it and send it to him and send it out. <laughs> Um, what about uh, another one here? I'll come to you here, Munz. Uh, Fire Lane in the first in the Max Leeds Classic. Brad Whittup's got a nice filly here. Yeah, very, very evenly bunched uh, group of two-year-olds, Dave. Of course, uh, the the race was uh, um, upset a little bit early when Bangetta um, flipped over and um, uh, came down on Brenton Abdullah. So it, it, it was a, a race where all of the field bar one uh, it had a start. And funnily enough, the only horse that it had a start, Speedster, we bet as much as $301 about it at the start of the week. It ran a $51 chance. They backed it to one, win $1.3 million. Um, and it didn't do a great deal. But uh, probably the run of the race there was Cylinder, the, the Godolphin runner, but drew the outside alley, which is a, a tough slot from the 900 at Newcastle because they are speed races. You just go to the turn. But the winner, the winner showed really, really good fight. The last little bit, Fire Lane, when Cylinder did come at it. I don't think there was any stars in the race. Okay. What about uh, Ace potential star here, Dino? Beautifully bred, the filly by the Virage to Fortune. Brucey McLaughlin's great mare. Uh, Remedies in the first Sarah Cranbourne. Um, that man again, Mark Zara. Yeah, Mark Zara for Godolphin. And uh, Remedies was favourite on Oaks Day at uh, Fleming Damage's Emergency, and she didn't gain a start, and uh, they just had to keep it ticking over, and uh, she got the front very quickly, uh, just trotted along through the middle stages and then sprinted up the straight and she was very good. It was a good race for Godolphin. I think there's a really nice horse ran fourth called Rusalon. Uh, he uh, got held up for quite a majority of the straight and when he got clear he really uh, went to the line like a nice horse. So I think uh, Godolphin had three in the race and uh, two of them uh, I think came out with uh, big ticks in their remedies and Rusalon. Okay, all right. Um, now, uh, boys, uh, looking ahead to what we've got uh, on the horizon. So we've got uh, the gong, uh, Chris, down at uh, Wollongong. And, gee, I hope we get uh, a crowd like we saw at Newcastle down there at Kembla. Thank you. I think you're going to get that. Uh, from living down there, I've spoken to a few people, and everyone's talking about getting out there for the day. So um, they just need good weather. Uh, it'll, it'll be an interesting race, I think. The thing about this race, they're coming from their forms coming from everywhere. They're coming from Melbourne Cup carnivals, they're coming from uh, hunters, you know. You, you can have an opinion in this race and you go get a price about your horse. Um, the old Flames favourite now, uh, uh, and I think it's been a bit of a target race for them. Unfortunately, James McDonald was to ride, he couldn't get the... With, what's happened with James McDonald? Just to explain to everyone. They usually fly out on the 10 o'clock plane to Hong Kong when they ride on Sunday, so they can ride Saturday, Sydney, and sleep on the plane and get up and ride ride at Hong Kong. Now there's no 10 o'clock plane anymore because of COVID, so now there's only 3 o'clock plane, so they've got to go earlier, so they cannot um, do both. So uh, James is elected to miss the gong and ride in Hong Kong, which might be a pointer to the rides he's got up there. Okay. Um, now, uh, yes, Kembla had 20, 20, uh, 23 mils of rain last night. Dave, mm -hmm. so currently rated a soft six, and uh, uh, I'm sure you know no one's a track manager here. But if there is time to get rain, it is straight after the race meeting they had on Saturday when that track's opened up, and 23 mils of rain. So I haven't looked at the weather forecast during the week, but that's a really, really good result to get an inch of rain on that track uh, to bounce back right throughout the week. And if I go to the weather forecast for Wollongong this week, uh, they are saying uh, today a possible shower but 26, partly cloudy tomorrow 22, 20% 20 chance of a shower. Wednesday shower or two, 
18 degrees, but uh, only 1 to 3 mils. Thursday, mostly sunny, 19 degrees, 10% chance of a shower. Friday, 20 degrees, 10% chance of a shower. And Saturday, 24 degrees, 20% chance of a shower. So that should be that track should be absolutely perfect there come Saturday. Yeah, OK. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's been racing good too, hasn't it, Munns, the Kembla track? Yeah, well, that day they've lost that many meetings. So one thing about it, the, the only positive, Dave Anderson, I think, has drawn out of the fact that um, we have lost that many meetings at Kembla. There's that much water in the ground there. Once we did get a break in the weather and a bit of heat and a bit of moisture, uh, the track's ready to just explode. And I think that's what it's done. So the rail will come back down there on Saturday. Uh, was out nine metres from the 1100, the winning post, and six metres of remainder there on Saturday. So it'll come back to the true, you'd have to think, uh, for Gong Day. And uh, I wonder when uh, uh, the Illawarra Turf Club are going to release who is going to dong the gong. Uh, before the running of the race on Saturday. Last year, of course, it was Alex Volganovsky. That's right, it was too. Um, down in Melbourne, uh, in Victoria, Dino, we've got uh, this uh, Ballarat meeting on Saturday, the Magic Millions Classic. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't do the clockwise anymore, do they? No, no, no they were just the normal, uh, normal way. Yeah, normal meeting. Yep. So and we've got uh, uh, the two year old classic, the three and four year old, and of course uh, the Ballarat Cup as well. Yeah, Ballarat Cup, half a million dollars. I think it'll be a really good field. Uh, I think maybe uh, Yonkers is coming down from Sydney, so the Sydney form, coming out of that Rose Hill Cup, which is looking a red hot form line. So, um, it, and uh, there'll be a good, good uh, lot of locals there um, trying to win it. Uh, I'm sure that the Ballarat uh, trainers have, have got some nice chances there. Okay, all right. No, I, think, I think Yonkers has gone to Perth. Oh, is he? Okay. John going to Perth. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, no, they were, they were looking for a rider for him for the Ballarat Cup last week. Okay. So that's why I sort of uh, I knew that. But, uh, oh, well, yeah, he'd be suited in Perth too. And then just on uh, on Perth, the segue, uh, Alaskan God is your favourite in the railway stakes, Tino? Uh, yes, yeah. I don't, the, the railway often just lends itself to an absolute uh, dominant favourite. I think he's uh, probably the right horse at the moment. Um, but... Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure about the uh, the, the railway uh, structure and, and at four dollars fifty, that's uh, that's probably about right. I uh, don't know. Um, they're just not uh, they're just not big names there. Um, the the, the uh, sort of Peters, you know, the big name Peters lightweight horse coming through isn't really there this year. Interesting. Um, just, uh, I'm not sure if you've got uh, the computer open months before we get some horses to Dave, follow. Larry, Larry yes. is always in attendance. Can you give us an update on that prenoms market for the gong and then maybe just tell us what's happening with that all-in market for the railway? Uh, okay, Dave. Well, I'll it, give you some in, prop numbers if you want. Will that help? No, you? no, Dave. No, no, Dave. I've, I've been doing this for a while, Dave. Right so right. it's not that hard. I was for just me trying to, to help. Teamwork. Evident, <laughs> evidently, you can't do it. Uh, uh, righto. In the gong. Now, this is a prenoms market. It'll shut shortly because uh, the the all in market will come <laughs> out. Uh, the noms will come out this morning. But Old Flames, the four dollar favourite over Brutality at five dollars. Hope in your heart. Well, if it's not one of the four horses going into the gong, I'm not here. At six dollars. Promise of success and Rustic Steel and Valana, all at 11. Well, you wouldn't think Valana is there. A tissue, Cisco Bay, he's on fire at the moment, Cisco Bay. Converge, Kiku, Kerwin's Lane, uh, Kissum, Riadini and Surf Dancer, all at $15. We just actually uh, got something out of Surf Dancer there, $485 at the $15 and left it there. Uh, Bandersnatch, Birdebeck, Brigantine, character amongst others all at $26 whether the railway now usually the final field for the railway is a Tuesday and they have a Tuesday yeah uh, yeah they have a draw and I think the draw is uh, on Sky Thoroughbred Central Tuesday night uh, Alaskan God the $4.50 favourite here this is the all in market over Carlos Karma at 6 Tricks of the Trade at 7 Treasured Stars at 8 Ironclad at 11 and then you've got Buster Bash Comfort Me Resort Man and Search and Rocks all at 15 Devoted God has Chosen and Steinem all at $17 uh, 21 for Last of the Line and 26 and longer the rest Outstanding I like it um all right, boys, horses to follow before we wrap this up on this Monday. Uh, I'll start with you, Chris. What horses do you like uh, to come out of that Newcastle meeting? I'll be, um, I'll, I'll be following Valana to Perth if it, if it ends up in that group one. I think, uh, I think um, this form's getting a little bit underrated by a few people. I think 
proper form, so I think Milano can go over and run a really good race at Ascot. And I'll stick with Wahaha Falls. I just think they rode him a bit closer under a big weight. I think given a chance to settle back and to find the line again in a couple of weeks, you'll see the real the real Wahaha Falls. What about yourself, Dino? What uh, horses to follow out of the meeting at Cranbourne? Yeah, pretty much the obvious, Dave. But uh, those uh, two horses in the three-year-old race, Garza Blanca and Greece, uh, both for the May Eustace stable. Don't be surprised if they're winning group races in the autumn. They're not just uh, sat their handicappers at uh, Cranbourne. Uh, Garza Blanca, Australian Guineas in Greece, a good uh, Phillies race. And Braden Star that won the shooting star for um, the Sutton Young. I think we might see him once more. But uh, in, in the autumn or the late autumn winter, he could be a very good horse. And Munns would have some horses to follow. Well, surely the most impressive winner there on Saturday was the, the midway winner in floating uh, for Maddie Smith. And what a big go it was. Uh, there was a couple of massive goes on Saturday. This was $8.50 to $4.60, but paled into insignificance of the horse of Barry Lockwood's that won the last race in Brisbane, which was $34 to $8.50 on race day. You just don't see that. Petronius, formerly trained by Gary Moore, but floating, I thought, was ultra, ultra impressive. It was only a benchmark 61 horse, so he cops another three kilos uh, in, in in a midway at its next start. It'll still only be a 67 raider, and it looks very, very promising. I love the way that it flattened out. We were, of course, Dave, we had uh, Annulus in our, our multi there. Looked home. Timmy Clark controlled the race. Well, floating went past it like it was nailed to the fence, but Annulus beat the others pointlessly as well. And spoke to Scotty Asprey, it's going to the paddock, Annulus. Um, a really, really weird one here, and I'm desperate for this horse actually to go back to Melbourne. Swats that, Dean, because it has had zero luck in three runs it's had in Sydney, and it's going to go back to Melbourne with form zero zero zero, and I think it just wants to get back to Melbourne. Okay. Well, right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what she wants. She's over two years between wins, but, yeah, she's had no luck. There's no doubt about that month. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just I'm just playing the fact she might just. Well, I know she hasn't won a race for two years, but yeah. she, she 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 hasn't really got in the race uh, to no, be in the finish uh, at any time here. And I, I, maybe they just you know they they're, they're smarter men than me, Kieran Maher and David Eustace. They might just send her back to Melbourne, and I think she'll get back to Melbourne with three duck eggs alongside her name, and she might yeah, be odds. Exactly. Yep. yep. And forgive notions in the last. Uh, um, the change of tactics there to be ridden with cover. Well, Timmy Clark had the outside alley. He, 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 he wanted to go back and then he had to go forward and then he had to go back and tried to go forward and it pulled up uh, probably not the best. May not have backed up from the other day, but it was, it, it was, just, it was just a total, total forgive run. So expect it uh, to bounce back definitely at its next run. OK, all right. Last but not least, before we go, and because there's been a, a couple of late texts here about it, um, Dino, and uh, maybe you can comment on this as well, uh, Chris, because your colleague Damien Ratcliffe wrote about this in The Age uh, and the Sydney Morning Herald for nine papers, just on the return possibly of Darren Weir, Dino. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. He's got a court appearance in December. And uh, depending on how that goes, I could imagine that uh, come February... Uh, he will try and reapply for his licence because he'll have done his four years. Now, other trainers that have done their time, like Lee and Shannon Hope, uh, have been uh, welcomed back to the fold. Other trainers, uh, the trainers through the Aquanita, uh, obviously Robert Smurden got life. Stuart Webb got three or four years, but he hasn't been... Uh, he's applied and been rejected on licences. So uh, it's um, it will be a very interesting time uh, with uh, Darren Weir. Um, I believe his daughter's up working for Chris Waller at the moment. Uh, Paige? Certainly Is it Paige, Paige or? Paige. 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 Is that the one? Yeah. Um, gaining experience. So that's, uh, that's another factor. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, but, uh, yeah, there was a, a court case in uh, well, maybe three or four weeks ago, three weeks ago, that went okay for Darren. And uh, so the next one's in December. The thing with the court case in December is that if he's found guilty in the court, then the stewards, the stewards don't act on anything that's before the court. So once it's been, he's been issued a penalty from the court, then the stewards can look at the evidence and say whether that's of concern for a racing breach as well, a licensing breach. Yeah. So whether, it, whether, it, whether they decide to tack something more onto this, this suspension is the first thing. And then it'll be up to 
the licensing committee down in Victoria to work out um, where, whether whether he's a fit and proper person, which we know is a broad and um, sometimes not quite mm. so black and white um, uh, ambiguous uh, criteria. Is that speaking of that, um, Ben Smith? Yes, I read a story. It came up. Uh, in the Daily Telegraph. For, uh, he's uh, he did four years. Uh, for Cobalt, so um, he has been given the green light by the uh, licensing committee and he's, he's training out of Kembla Grange. Yeah, I think the big thing too is, um, and from that article that Damien wrote, um, there's obviously a lot of support for Darren with, with big owners, which is what you need. Um, just a question though, and maybe Chris, you can answer this, obviously Race and Victoria have a, a stringent character test, which obviously uh, Darren needs to... Um, Pass to return is that similar in all states? Do they all have this this character test that, that unfolds? Similar, it's, to get a license, you've got to be a fit and proper person. Yeah. So, um, the 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 um, in this case, I think having owners who are prepared to to back you and have references, and it all comes down to things like that. So if you go to court, Dave, you you, you get um, Glenn to write you a, a nice reference. Things like that. I'd get Glenn to represent me there. No one would get it. No one would get to talk. He, he would just be Munns just talking the whole time. So, but it'd be the, and I tell you what, Dave, I'd tell them it was the vibe. <laughs> the vibe. Marbo. So that'll, carry, that'll carry a bit of weight with, with the licensing committee, but it's up to it's up to Rachel Victoria to make a decision on on, yeah. on 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 what happened and 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 where where that sits in the, in the narrative of racing these days. So you know, it's a, a uh, it's a lot different world to it was a decade ago, I, I would say, with things like that. Yeah, okay. Very, very interesting. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, just an ad, Ben Smith looks like having his first runner this Thursday at Hawkesbury. Okay. Well, good, good luck to Ben. He's got a horse nominated there delicately. Uh, he's training for Tony Lavelle, who I think you'll find is a good mate of Wayne Harris's. Yeah, well, good luck to, to Ben and, and good luck to those participants that do come back because I'm fairly sure you're getting some pretty dark places in your mind and um, obviously, um, much like the story that Damien wrote, I think it would be a lot for all of the participants that um, that do find trouble and then make a comeback is this is all they know. They know um, about racing and they love the game, so... They get that uh, next chance, and, and let's hope they uh, they make the best of it. Boys, thanks so much for being a part of Punters Post Mortem. We'll catch you next Monday after the gong. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave.